WTV Good morning. This is Janine Panarelli, licensed real estate broker and owner of Panarelli Realty. Good morning. This is Michael Gianetto, licensed mortgage loan originator with residential home funding. No, you didn't do it right. Oh, uh, I didn't. Residential. Residential home funding. Home funding. <laughs> <laughs> Happy morning. You're yes. listening to uh, Monday morning. You're listening to the Home and Mortgage Show on WTBQ here in Warwick. It's nice and sunny today. Yes, it's nice out. It's but, nice out. A little, little breezy, but it's still nice out. We got more snow last night, which I didn't expect. I, and well, I'm, I'm carefully listen, watching. Listen, they can't, they can't forecast anything right now. I, I, I told you once before. I think I mentioned on, on air. I want to be a weather person when I grow up, <laughs> right? It, it's going to be sunny, possibly cloudy, zero to 100 degrees, and 50% yeah. chance of precipitation. <sighs> right? I could do that job. I'm a little nervous. I pointed they said the map. That three out of the four models... Okay, maybe you you know you in your dream weatherman mode that you're in know what that means, <laughs> but three the out European of four model models and the U.S. model and the <laughs> Finnish <laughs> model and yeah. they say three out of the four weather models show a significant storm Wednesday into Thursday. Yes, which is uh, which is a problem for me. Yes, big yes. problem. Yes, so. Um, it's tomorrow, the big day. Yes. <laughs> tomorrow is my 25th wedding Quarter anniversary. Quarter century. 25th wedding anniversary. Congrats. So Congrats. To, yeah, my husband, Happy Michael, I love you. Happy anniversary. Yeah, it's uh, 25 it's years. It's a big milestone. It, you know, a lot happens in 25 years. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm sure anyone that makes it there can a write a book. Lot, I, I can. A lot happens. And a lot of people were betting against us when we first got married. When I got when I was in the church, did I ever tell you the story? Uh, no. <laughs> we, I, I'm Catholic, so we have to go to pre-Cana. Right. And we have to take a class. Mm -hmm. it's, it, I guess it's, you know, they want you to be aware of what you're getting into, and, you know, who's going to put the toilet paper over and under and leave the t toothpaste cap <laughs> open, and is that going to bother you? And all you know what? I got to tell you that <laughs> the, the toilet paper over and under is a big pet peeve of mine. It always has to be over. <laughs> over no, the under. No. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? So we had to take this class, and it was in somebody's house. And we were there with other couples who were getting married. There were maybe five or six other couples. And there was like this, um, the, the person, you know, the, the, the couple who actually owned the home, they were like the, the leader of the group, you know. And we would have to go, uh, I think it was however many sessions there were, to talk about it and plan and, you know, set expectations and all that kind of stuff. And one day we went and... Now, keep in mind, everybody that was there was like in their mid thirties. We were twenty and twenty-one. Wow! So we were real. Yeah, we were. We were twenty. You just gave away your age, by so, the way. Yeah, so good with that. I'm, you know, I'm, lo I'm looking good. No. So, um, we, everybody looked down on us, like you know, we didn't know what we were doing, and talked to us like we were kids. You know, they, we really, we were, were very were mature. Kids. But yeah, but yeah. we were mature for our age. So, <laughs> so um, my, my goal one day come home from work with the flu and he had fever and he couldn't go to the to the to the group session that night so i went by myself thinking that that was the responsible thing to do go by myself at least show up and when i got there they said well where's michael i said he came home from work with the flu they didn't believe me oh my goodness they said that he was acting irresponsibly and they kicked us out of pre -game. come on <laughs> i cannot make this up 25 that was 25 they, years ago tw yeah i got kicked out of pre -cana. so they told us that we were not responsible we had to start all over again they were oh so against us yeah and i had to go to the greek orthodox church to do are you it. kidding they took us in yes Oh my goodness! Yes. So you got married in the Greek church? No, no, they just they the wouldn't they let us go back the into their pre. <laughs> that that couple didn't want us back in their house. Oh my goodness! So you know we laugh because we like to see how many of those couples in that room that were with us during that time. Who? How many of them are still married? Why you knew who they were? No, but I'm just saying. You know. If All right. What? Fifty percent probably aren't. Th but this is my point. Here I am, 25 years later. They're telling us that we were, you know, irresponsible. And 25 right. years later, we're still married. So, you know, how do you judge something like that by, based on right. somebody's age? Well, listen, I keep yeah. telling my wife, she's stuck with me forever. So, well, yeah. you know. Well, what, the joke is now talk, it's 25 years. So, you know, we, I don't really, I don't remember because it was so long ago. If we said till death do us part, I kind of remember, you know, <laughs> for at least the next 25 years part. in the contract, you, you know, you, it's an option whether you want to renew, like. 
<laughs> so, so that's the joke. Yeah. So, I mean, we, uh, my, my kids, you know, they tease us all the time. You know, we're close. My husband and I are close. We have a lot of things that we love to do together. We have a lot of uh, interest. Which is great. And we're always out, you know, we're always clowning around, goofing off, that kind of stuff. Our right. kids think we're totally gross, you know, because we have a good time together. You know, they don't get it. So I, That's good. That's <laughs> what keeps you young. That's what keeps the relationship. I, I was with my shape. daughter at ShopRite yesterday, as as I am every Sunday. And I said, so come on, help me pick out a card for, you, for, for your father for Valentine's Day and for, you know, my anniversary and she's reading the cards and she's going oh she, I can't she's up. going she's going the love of, she's just reading like the first line going you are the love of my life she goes right there too much it's way too much for me she's going Ugh. She, she's funny. like I can't help you with this this is too gross That's you have great. to do it on That's your great. own but it, it's all good we have a we have a really good time good so, 25 good. years later happy uh, happy anniversary so yes. we're excited happy about that Mike. we're excited about that but we're supposed to be going somewhere Thursday morning. We're going for a four-day... Well, when is this snow know, supposed to start? I don't know. They're saying Wednesday late into Thursday morning. You better and change it's your trip be and leave Wednesday. So I'm like... Are I you can't. flying? So Wednesday night, no. Yeah, you're driving. No. So Wednesday night, though, I teach CCD up at St. Joe's. And I don't get out of class till 8.30 at night. So I'm like, how am I going to do this now? So can't you find another catechist to, to take your place? Well, I had to work two weeks ago on a Wednesday. And I felt bad because I had to get somebody covered for me. And that was the first time you know I, I did that this year and i don't want to have to have anybody cover for me i feel bad i don't know you, you know? might want to think about I, it again i'm being responsible for my Just class pay them. I don't they'll want... do it pay them <laughs> pay them <laughs> bribe. oh that's great yeah in the catholic church i gotta bribe somebody right. to come in to <laughs> take my class i don't think that would work too well <laughs> only you would hey, come listen. up with that <laughs> money talks you know yeah gets people to do it so you watch in the olympics i love the olympics we I watch it too. every day i do too um i'd like to shout out to aiden kelly who's that aiden kelly is the son of a friend of mine i went to high school with meredith kuhn kelly and aiden kelly was in the luge Oh, really? Yeah, 19 wow. years old. Interesting. So everybody that we went to high school with, we're, you know, we're all over Facebook and posting the links to the Olympic team for the luge team. And they were posting, you know, you have um, run one, run two, and right. then run three, run four. So they were posting it all on Facebook. I think he's really the future of the Olympics. He, You could see the passion that he's got for it. I was so excited that for her. That is. That's amazing. She went all, you know, she got on a plane with a bunch of people. I don't know who they were. And uh, she went to over there to go watch That's her son great. in the Olympics. So that how is that like an amazing, amazing dream? Yeah, yeah, amazing. So, but I'm, this is his first, and I'm sure this will not be his last. Yeah, at 19 years old. Yeah, so exciting. He's got a few more in him. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was really <laughs> cool to see. Really, really cool to see. You know. That's very he's cool. He's the son of somebody you right, went to right. school with. You know, that it's, it's cool. exciting. It, it just, it's nice. You know, you hear so much crap going on. This is something that you could really feel good right, about. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to congratulate Aiden Kelly good, and good. my friend Meredith Kuhn Kelly from high school. I Excellent. thought that was great. Congrats, yeah. Aiden. Yeah. So I yeah. think, um, we, well, we have our, our guest coming back today because we have so much that we still have to is talk he about. Here yet? You know, I think, I think he's, he's late uh, again. Was he behind a plow this time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think he's here. I saw a car. Oh, there. Oh, he is. there we go. <laughs> he's doing. He's yeah. He's here now. Yeah. So uh, that was an the roads are pretty. The roads How are do you pretty. Say that? <laughs> that was an <laughs> expletive to leave. Yes. Expletive. Do you ever hear that commercial? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, come on in. <laughs> oh, he's in, he's in, he's enjoying his latte. So we're going to take a break. Let Mike regroup, and we'll be right back. Master Pest Control is proud to be a sponsor of the Home and Mortgage Show. When the time comes to buy a house, you will be faced with a lot of important choices. Having a home inspection is a critical part of the process, so choose wisely. Masters Pest Control has over 30 years of residential pest control experience, and they work closely with Ultra Home Inspections. That means you get two inspectors for the price of one. Better value, exceptional service. Consider Masters Pest Control. Call toll-free 877-656-2024. That's 877-656-2024. 024. Quality and professionalism are two words that describe Ultra Home Inspections. Fully licensed, certified, and insured. Their training and skill will provide you with all the information you'll need 
to make an educated decision on your home purchase or sale. Ultra Inspection serves Orange and Sullivan counties in New York and Pike and Wayne County in Pennsylvania. Call 845-545-0960 or check out all their services by visiting their website at www.ultrahomeinspections.com. Hi, it's Dr. Oz, inviting you to join me for your daily dose with Dr. Oz. I want to make sure you're informed. The number one weapon against illness is wellness. That's my daily mission. Weekdays at 1.30 on WTBQ, radio worth listening to. Hi, this is Ed Lynch, host of the Edward Jones Daily Stock Market Update. Tune in every weekday at 6 p.m. to get the Daily Stock Market Update, along with great insights for making sense of investing, right here on WTBQ. WTBQ. Hi, welcome back to the Home and Mortgage Show. I'm Michael Giannetto. And I'm Janine Panarelli. You're listening to, again, the Home and Mortgage Show on WTBQ. If uh, you have any questions or if you have any comments during the show, please give us a call, 651-1110. You know, if you want to make fun of Mike, either Mike. Yeah. It, it, it works. That happens a lot. Call it. <laughs> I have a very thick skin. People make 651 <laughs> And Mike McCann is with us in the office, I guess, uh, you didn't leave at 6 o'clock in the morning like I told you to. I, my apologies. Again, for being late. That's all right. I know the roads are still, right. uh, they're pretty cruddy. I think it was the drivers in front of me this morning rather than the roads. Oh, so, yes. No, I was just telling you guys, stuck. I didn't have any drivers in front of me and couldn't clean my windshield because the, uh, the, the windshield fluid froze up. And uh, <laughs> so I was driving with a dirty windshield the whole time. It does see, happen. You know. I wanted, there was a guy shoveling on the side of the road. I was going to pull over and tell him to throw the snow on the windshield. So you can... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my I have a, I have two dogs. My dog's nose is always on the window, on the back sliding door. So genius me, I'm like I'm gonna go out and clean off the window. So I sprayed it, smeared it, and that's the way it stayed. Oh my goodness, that's, <laughs> that's disgusting. That's yeah. <laughs> I had to clean it off, but it just froze instantly. <laughs> That's funny. So we so, um, go ahead. I wanted to uh, I wanted to mention we we didn't uh, bring it up yet, but our our home ownership show that we're going to be having yes. uh, expo a little expo in Goshen on April fifth, mm-hmm. right? Twenty five Main Street. Yes, and we're going to be having that. We're all going to uh, be there. And we're going to be announcing everything, and uh, we're going to have vendors, not vendors, but our partners mm-hmm. that we deal with, mm-hmm. um, for, uh, like Michael uh, McCann and O'Keefe and McCann. And, uh, Mike Hunch from, from Mike has uh, the flu or? now. He was in the Orange Regional, I think, last night with it. Was yeah. he? Oh. Yeah, he's got the flu. This so flu is horrible. Please, shout out you. to Mike Hunch. Please, you know, get better oh, and stay in bed. Obviously, he, he's all over Facebook last night, and people are yelling at him. We thought you had the flu. What are you doing? Uh, he's posting all kinds of stuff on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, well, you could do that while you're in bed. <laughs> I guess you know? so. Speaking of Facebook, what did you guys think of those the uh, the movies, the the uh, your Facebook movie? Or uh, your Facebook uh, look back, rather? I didn't do mine. You didn't? I noticed you did yours. I yeah. made your movie. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, Our picture I made became it. a part of your made movie. <laughs> that is awesome. I thought that was epic. It was so I great. I didn't do that. It was so great. You didn't do it? No. I no? didn't do mine either. No? It was so great. I don't great. know how to, I, I didn't All you have really to do look. is see someone's, and it says, see your look back, and you mm-hmm. click it, and it does yours in seconds. I do a lot from my smartphone, so I don't. I didn't get to see that. You might have to be on a PC for that. No, you no. I think computer? if you yeah. see somebody's mo- uh, look back, you just press the, the little link that's above it, right? and it'll do your own. And really? it, it's very cool. Yeah. Well, that's very nice. Cool. I think Facebook really, uh, and... that was a shining moment for them. Oh, that's good. Yeah, no. <laughs> My whole life is one big drama movie. I don't need to watch it. Just, no comment. No, Mike's known me. My, I, this mic has known me longer than this mic, so he knows. <laughs> so um, I wanted to, well, while we're on air, I'm looking this up because there's so much going on uh, with regard to the uh, minimum wage. Yeah, which has been a battle going on for, uh, for yeah, a little while. I'm trying now, to right? figure this out. The... The minimum wage was increased, I think, to um, $8 an hour, but they're trying to get it increased to $10.10 per hour. I thought it was nine twenty-five or something. It was I want to look this up because they're saying, you know, uh, we, we know that the minimum wage was too low. 13 states raising pay for minimum wage workers. So we know it was too low. But now people are saying that if you raise the minimum wage to $10.10 an hour, there's going to be more harm than good right. as it a result hurts. from that. Right. 
because so, the employers can't afford to, to hire more more employees, yeah. and therefore it's a it, it's a. I don't you know, think people understand that it works. You know, they just say, it, "Well, I'll be making more money." Yeah, but if an employer has you know, ten employees, let's say, and now he's got to pay them all more, and he's got to let a few of them go because he doesn't can't Correct. afford it. Now you're having five employees instead of ten. People are going to wind up losing their jobs. All right, those five that he keeps might be making a few more dollars. Correct. But now you have five people out of work. So I don't, you know. I think it levels out after a little while. You know, the the employers get used to making a little less money, and then it, you know, it kind of levels out because he still needs to employ- produce so now, a certain amount so of of whatever they're making or doing, or you know, the mm. widgets and the, you know, the widgets. So, yeah, they make widgets. <laughs> That's so. a legal term, Janine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just what. What are these things on your phone? Yeah, the are widgets. Are those widgets? Yeah. Yes. The okay, widgets. well, that's the only widget I still don't I know. know what a widget is, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll it's use like the word. It's like a giant I think app. I learned that in school. No. Should I learn that in school? Generic term that? for anything you make. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> a widget. <laughs> a widget. All right, good. So um, we were we were talking last week about short sales. We didn't finish. No. No, we did not finish. So... Um, what I wanted to talk about was, and I've been hearing this a lot on a lot of different um, shows, people saying how, you know, you can refinance through the Home Affordability Refinance Program, the HARP. Yes. How mm-hmm. many people have you know, do you know, Mike, that have actually refinanced through HARP? I have done personally, I think, three that have been approved out of... It's maybe a 10% return, maybe a 5% return. For the HARP say. program? Yes. And how really? many years? I think mm-hmm. a lot of people are doing them individually and privately with the bank, not involving attorneys necessarily. Mm-hmm. Because right, right, when right, it right. does work um, and the paperwork is submitted, um, that there's a, a, a guideline and a manual that they go by. Mm-hmm. And it's simply a, a waterfall, they call it, where mm-hmm. they have to take step one, step two, step three evaluate your eligibility material and then give you the modification if you're eligible. And right, for the, for the modification side. Correct. Right, for the, for the refinance side, for the HARP program, you know, it's, for me, it's very simple on my side where we just look up, you know, I literally go online to the Fannie Mae lookup, put in their information, and boom, it spits out, does Fannie Mae own your mortgage, yes or no? Same thing for Freddie Mac. I apologize. I misunderstood your, your question, Janine. I didn't realize we were talking about the refi portion of it. We but were, but Mike just jumped you in. You said That's harp. Okay. Yeah, well, the re- yes. Harp no, and HAMP. Harp, but, yeah, yeah, harp and HAMP. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yes, the modification and the refinance. Okay, so, HAMP. so let, let me do a shameless the HAMP plug. The HARP. So, <laughs> you know, Go ahead. <laughs> by all means. <laughs> you know, the HARP program is a really good program for those people that may be underwater that want to refinance and take advantage of the, the rates and lower their payments or lower their terms. Mm-hmm. You know, when the, the mortgage is owned by Fannie or Freddie, and has a note date, which means that they've closed prior to May 31st of 09. Yes. So it's a great program that people could do. You will not know if Fannie or Freddie owns your mortgage because there's a servicer involved. So Mm -hmm. most people do not know. I I believe there is a website that you can go on to to look up whether or not they own the mortgage. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, Or they could call me and they can... They can, uh, that is cool. I can look can, it up for them. them know. That's absolutely. right. Absolutely. Yes, you can call me. 845 496 0836. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. my shameless plug. Yeah, no, that's fine. What are the percentages, though? Of, because a lot of houses are underwater at this point. So the problem that you run into is the house is no longer worth what they need to refinance for to get out from under the old debt. Correct. How does HARP account for that? Because that's what I'm seeing a lot of is that you can't refinance because of the economics of it. I've known well, several people who couldn't No, the HARP program, they changed their guidelines a couple of times along yes, the way since yes. the stimulus and since the program. But the most recent one that they changed, it's unlimited, unlimited LTV or loan to value. So it doesn't matter how far underwater they are. And some people have a second or a line of credit, a line of uh, 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 equity loan, and as long as, because you cannot incorporate those into the loan and, mm-hmm. and combine them. So as long as that particular lender or bank will subordinate back into second position, then, then it works in their favor. Typically they will, because it's putting somebody in a better financial position, giving them the ability to pay that, that second or that you know, line or loan a little better or easier than before. So if you have you owe uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars on your house and it's only worth two hundred thousand dollars, 
You could still refinance. Correct. You could do the HARP. Again, only if it's owned by Fannie or Freddie. Mm -hmm. And, and if it closed prior to May 31st 50, of 09. they'll just ref now they'll refinance at the current market value of the property and you get to forgive or forget. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you still owe that money. I'm trying here. <laughs> no, no, no. You still owe that money. You're going to you're going to refinance the existing balance. Mhm. Mm so the interest rate will just be the full two fifty. You would refinance. Correct. The full two fifty. Regardless that you're of refinance. that's where you were saying unlimited loan to value. Correct. So and it could be. Where, yeah. And there's there's waivers. There's uh, property inspection waivers. They call it a PIW that allow for to not even do an appraisal. Really. If, if the automated system <laughs> takes the value that you're putting in, then it, it'll probably give you the waiver. Where are the interest rates at now? Compared to where they were, say, 2006, 2007, 2008? Uh, they're actually a little bit lower than they were then. Um, not, not far, not far below. But uh, actually, 7, 8 was probably, in, there was some in the 6s, uh, high 5s. So actually, in, in that period, you're about a point lower now. You're in the mid 4s right now, um, without me saying a specific rate in the mid 4s right. Right, uh, on a 30 year fixed. And the term stays the same, or you put it in place for a new 30 year term? Uh, they can choose their term. So they could do a 30, they could do a 15, a 20. Um, and those rates, a 20 is slightly lower and a 15 is significantly lower now, than a 30. you have to be current on your mortgage to do that. Correct. And uh, current you have for, to have... for at least 12 months. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a certain credit score? Uh, no, they'll go down, they will go down to generally a 620. Okay. But anything above, you're, you're fine. All right, but 620 nowadays... It's pretty low. It's yeah. It's pretty low. It's pretty low. Okay. Yeah. So that then that doesn't matter. What are credit scores on an FHA, USDA, those type of loans? Uh, we can go down to a six twenty on an FHA, uh, okay. USDA six forty. Uh, so you know we, we're pretty aggressive that way. Uh, VA is six sixty. Um, you know, but they they allow for these you know these lower credit scores. You know, you're going to get hit in certain ways, or there's some nuances that have to be uh, tackled uh, as far as maybe some reserves for people, and you know, uh, so there's some nuances to the programs. And Janine, to answer the real question you asked me before, I've done zero harps. That's where I was going. <laughs> zero. So, uh, the harps, but what yes. about hamp? Hamp, that was the answer I was giving you. We've yeah, done hamp. a few modifications, but it's it's not. What a lot of people talk is. about it like you know and i and and they put this into place as as a means of people to be able to have an option rather than walk away or do a short sale get foreclosed whatever they have options but if those options aren't working then what's the point i have two right now that are pending that were both declined by the lender and they're going to move forward to foreclosure unless we do something and we're talking about doing a chapter 13 bankruptcy mm -hmm. um to either strip part of the second lien which is allowable right. under the bankruptcy laws in a chapter 13 okay um to try to save this particular person's house um it, again it, you kind of evaluate it on a on a step-by-step -step basis you try a and if A doesn't work, move to yeah, B. Yeah, well, now, now the the bankruptcy, as you're mentioning, it, it is an automatic stay on the foreclosure, right? It kind of stops it in, tra in its tracks. It does, right? correct. And and now you're talking about the lien stripping, right, of a second or third or whatever it may be. But doesn't it have to be the full amount if there's any equity in that property? I, I don't do Chapter 13s or full oh, amount. Okay. I do okay. Chapter 7s, um, but. There is a, a mechanism to get rid of that entire second loan if it is not secured any longer. Got and it, that's got what it. the lien stripping is all about, which will correct it back down to real market value with the loan that's in place. So in terms of what you're doing, mechanically speaking, that may leave them in a much better place than had they been approved for the modification, because a lot of these right. banks are taking the modifications and spreading them out over a 40-year term. So you go from a... a 25 year for example term on your mortgage to a 40 year term on your mortgage no oh, which right. if you're right. 35 you're going to pay it off when you're 75 <laughs> there no, you go no, there you go <laughs> that's a that's a long mortgage we're going to take a quick break and uh, be right back here on wtbq happy new year 
Now celebrate by gifting yourself and your family with a new kitchen and let the professionals at Hudson Valley Kitchen Design take your dreams and make them into a reality. From concept to installation and everything in between. Our well-trained, courteous staff will customize your new kitchen while keeping it within your budget. Start living the dream by calling 845-294-8242 and we'll have you cooking on your new stove in no time. For all the do-it-yourselfers, builders, and contractors, we invite you to our retail showroom located at 2713 Route 17 M in Goshen. And please like us on Facebook at the Hudson Valley Kitchen Design. Call 845-294-9068. We will make your dreams a reality in 2014. This is Sister Anna. Listen to The Garden of the Child, a story discussion time with students. Story develops listening skills and imagination. Saturdays at 11.10 a.m. on WTBQ. This is Dave Dirks, outdoor columnist for the Times Herald Record. Join me Saturday mornings from 7 to 8 a.m. for the Dirks Outdoors radio show. Each week I'll have outdoor personalities from a variety of outdoor sports. That's the Dirks Outdoors show Saturday mornings right here on WTBQ. WTBQ weather. Sunshine, windy, and cold today with our high about 25. Tonight, clear and very cold, 5 to 10. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and even colder with a high in the lower 20s. It'll be clear and cold tomorrow night, 0 to 3 below. And for Wednesday, sun followed by clouds gets into the 20s, and we could have a significant snow event for late Wednesday night and Thursday. This is meteorologist Tony Salimo from the WTBQ Weather Center. WTBQ ideas. Okay, we're back. You're listening to the Home and Mortgage Show on WTBQ Radio 93.5. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us, uh, Michael McCann of O'Keefe and McCann. We're talking short sales and modifications of loans and all good stuff. <laughs> it's the stuff that... Good is not the word that springs <laughs> to my mind, but <laughs> well, it's sometimes. It's good for the sometimes. consumer. It's good yeah. information it can be good for the that people need to know. That's what right. we try and do. We try to just put that information out there. You know, And we don't just talk about you know whether you want to buy or sell your home. You might want to stay in your home, what right. you can do to maintain the home, re- refinance your loan, You know, just to make you want to stay you in know, your home. I, I don't know if I mentioned this uh, in our last show, but I had a prior client that needed to do a modification. Right? They... they uh, they had a, a situation at the house with income and yada yada. Um, they went to somebody that was advertising to do modifications. They spent twenty seven thousand dollars. What? Tw- they called me after the fact, and I was blown away. I, I, I because oh I, my I, yes. So <laughs> they had a name of an attorney illegal? that they called. Yes. So um, they actually called this attorney, and the attorney. Um, is now going after that company because apparently that company never contacted their lender. Mm. So she called them, you know, because they said, don't contact them, we'll take care of it for you. And after a certain period of time, she couldn't get them on the phone, she paid them all this money, and then no, she finally called and said, did you hear from X? And and the, uh, the lender said, no, we've never heard from these people. <gasps> And yeah. a lot of times, if, if the homeowner simply makes that call themselves right. and says, listen, I, and I can tell you stories either way. You know, I can tell you success stories. Mm-hmm. I can tell you horror stories of, of this stuff. Um, but if the homeowner simply calls the lender and asks for help, the lender's going to do something. Every major lender now has a home retention department you, right. or a loss mitigation department They'll or whatever you know they call options. it. They will tell you what your options are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there are nonprofit agencies out there that will um, assist you if you're otherwise eligible. Mm-hmm. You know, if you call the Bar Association, they will give you a referral to an attorney that may be able to help you either to reduce cost or um, send you to a nonprofit that may be able to help you if you're eligible. I, I think it's important to mention that that a consumer that is looking to do a modification should not be paying a company, right, in advance. I agree. Definitely um, should not be paying not. a company in advance for any kind of modification. Definitely we as an attorney not. do take a retainer um, to, to do a well, modification. Well, as, a, as an attorney, right, against. a law firm, if you're dealing with a law firm, that's one thing. They are spending their time. They're doing it. It's a fiduciary responsibility, right? Versus a a one modification company in yeah. quotes that is gonna you know right. promise you the world and it's about twenty seven times less than what you mo- right. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah wow that yeah. I've never heard I've heard somebody say that they they paid four thousand dollars and and the the only advice I would give to a potential homeowner that's gonna do it on their own is that you have to be very very diligent and very ordered in your 
presentation of these things because the banks will lose documents they will require things to be sent you know multiple times it's very frustrating from a homeowner's you know you position. have to be relentless you do and you, you have, have to follow to up with phone calls and you have to write down who you spoke to right, and when right. you spoke to exactly. them and even doing that won't necessarily carry the day so to speak Right. But, but at know, least you can name who you spoke correct. with on the particular day. They had X, Y, and Z from me. They only needed, you know, uh, A and B. And, and some of the documents do expire during the course of, of them evaluating them. Uh, they need current pay stubs. They need current bank statements. They want to make sure that you didn't receive an inheritance of $50,000 and still be asking and still for want help. For the modification. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so. I try and explain that to my, my clients. They don't. I give them a whole checklist of things that they need. They need um, tax returns. Yeah. Yes. They want to see your tax returns. Right. They, they want to see, you know, did you cash in your 401k? Or, although, tell people, they, um, they cannot, correct me if I'm wrong, ask you for your uh, retirement money, your pension, any money from your pension or your 401k to, as a contributor. I don't believe they can. No. I don't know what the actual I don't know if they know, can statutory can. basis but for they, that. No. Well, if they, if they can ask you, they can't use it in their, as the assets toward the, right. the, the situation. Yeah, no. So people are always afraid, oh, I don't want them to see that I have this money in the 401k, or I don't want them to see that I have this money. If, you know, if it's, it's, if it's part of your retirement, they can't ask you to, to, to take any of that. In the um, context of a bankruptcy, your retirement is excludable. They yeah, don't count it, you as, can't count it as an asset. Yeah, oh, that's so interesting. They, so people if they don't, don't know do that. it there, I don't know that a bank would be allowed to do it yeah. in, in the context of a modification. Right. Yeah, but right. they're afraid. They're like, well, I don't want to turn over my financial documents. You know, it's um, uh, 30 days worth of pay stubs. Uh, W-2 is for two years. You need tax returns. It's you like a mortgage. A it's like it, you're, you're actually yeah. giving them a mortgage well, underwriting file to, to like look at. The, the, um, I call it a P&L, but they want to see the um, homeowner's monthly income it's a budget minus right. Correct. yeah it's it's a all budget. Right. their monthly expenses right they're going to figure out that debt to income ratio the same they way they do on a regular mortgage and what and i think one of the everybody. guidelines is 31 percent the the housing payment has to be 31 percent of the the gross monthly income correct right for that modification and i'm running into that with modifications now i have one client that simply makes too much money they're not giving them a mod Unfortunately, right. um, oh, because that. they, we you know, that. Well, listen, they can afford it. They're obviously on time, right? Because they can afford it. Well, that's this not, unless they're doing strategic, not, unless it's strategic. Is, yeah. So I, I, I had, uh, you know, and we've had so many stories that nobody would ever know who the heck we're talking about <laughs> over the years. But I had somebody who made plenty of money, you know, had BMWs. Uh, somebody come into tune their piano on a monthly basis. Oh, Janine, and your client trying... is calling in right now. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> We've had a lot of them. And uh, you don't qualify. You just don't qualify. You know, when you when you write down your monthly expenses and they see, you know, uh, piano <laughs> tuner on there, because they put that on there, piano tuner, they're like, really? But in that case, okay. they may be a if perfect child... candidate for a Chapter 13. I'm like, okay, you know, I don't have a piano. There you go. I don't have a tuner. Never mind. I don't have the piano. Never mind the tuner. <laughs> you know, I'm I always like, wanted to play piano. Me too. I think I it's pretty cool. Fingers. My daughter's got very long, very long, graceful fingers. So yeah, I have I think one it of those would be Casios. pretty cool to be able to just sit down and <laughs> jam go, out. Doo -doo. All right. Well. <laughs> I would have given you mine. I always wanted to play guitar. I did. I, I did? confess that was one of my dreams. I always wanted to play guitar. Never, never did it. I dream about it in my head. <laughs> Never did. Who's got time? In your golden years, in my you, go you go get a, a guitar. Smack you. <laughs> I'm going to smack you. The golden years are now, yeah, That's Mike. one reason now. why we can't do a podcast. Yeah. Mike, did you, hear, did you hear Janine? 25 years she's going to be married tomorrow? A quarter century. Congratulations. Unbelievable. You can't, and they got married when they were 40. Is that crazy? <laughs> but, <laughs> Am I allowed to say the A word on air? Because that's what's going to happen, Michael. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's a huge milestone. Congratulations. Yeah. I, I still feel so young because we got married really young. You know, I mean. Well, I just wonder if this is what happens to everybody that starts to reach these, these ages. You know, you get into your 40s and you're like, I don't feel 40. I don't feel 40. You know? I don't. Yeah, I wonder if it's if it's if everybody goes through that and it's well, they say or like if it's progressively the new, that the new, people say the new forties, the new forties, the, the new yeah, thirty, yeah, yeah exactly. forties, the new thirty, well. orange is the new black. Yeah. <laughs> Are you making fun of my shirt? No, no, not at all. <laughs> well, that, 
that's that's more of you're a, looking marvelous today, Mike. That's yeah, oh, that thanks, Mike. A, that is orangey is it kind a of salmony it's a kind salmon? of salmon. Yeah, looks looks good on you, Mike. Uh, and you got the green on the other side over here. I like you know that what? Green. I feel like I'm in between two Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Spring colors. Uh, <laughs> Spring that's right. We're, is that a comment on our We're hair? willing it. Hair patterns. We're willing it. We're with willing my, it to ourselves right scarf. now. Well, is it this heart month? It's Valentine's week, so I'm wearing red oh, with go. hearts on it. And it is it, heart, aware, uh, heart awareness month, right? Isn't it? Yes. It's Valentine's, yes. and it's also everybody wears red for heart awareness. Correct. And um, heart disease. It's, I think, my it's the number one. What, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Come on, we need some laughter. I'm here. not sure which was worse, the dog on the window or the speedo <laughs> comment. <laughs> All right, people, I'm sorry. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Mike's gonna want to come back every week oh, now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> can't get you know get in on this. Oh. Oh. So gross. actually, can I? You know, we were talking about income and uh, and these underwriting packages. Yes. So I I had a client that uh, that I was speaking to, and they were self-employed. And needed to do their tax returns, and they kept they were calling me and saying, "How much do I need to have on my tax returns?" And I kept saying, "I can't tell you how much to put oh. on your tax return. <laughs> you know, you, whatever you're going to claim for your taxes with your accountant, that's what you do. You know, and then I can tell you how much you can qualify for to buy a house, but I can't tell you how much to put on your tax return. You know, people want that's me to a tell scary them. Question. Yeah, it's very that's a scary. scary question. And people want me to Could tell you them. And I, you know, so I, I cannot tell you how much to put on your tax returns. Oh, all right. <laughs> you know, for you people listening out there. Yeah. Um, there is the website makinghomeaffordable.gov. So people can go on there and learn more about um, HARP, which HAMP. is home, Affo- home Affordability Refinance Program. The HAMP is the Home Affordability Modification Program. And also there's the Do HAFA. Do have a HAMP one? There's the HAFA. They have no, HAMP? not HAMP. That's only in <laughs> Oregon and, <laughs> and Colorado. 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 <laughs> the HAMP program. Okay. Well, Home Eligibility Modification Program, I guess. <laughs> um, and the HAFA. And we're not talking Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. We're talking that's H-A-F- a whole different show. That's another show. H A F. Were they trying to find him recently? Yeah. No, I think you were referring they tried to, to dig the Bruce up. Almighty movie. No, no, <laughs> I think they tried to. Did you see that movie? I did. I think they tried to uh, to find him recently. It was only a few months ago that they were digging somewhere, thinking he was there. Seriously? Yeah. Yes. Who cares? Yeah. I think you're making this up. I know. Who cares? Maybe. I think, no, I'm not <laughs> making it up. I'm I think not making you're just it making this up. <laughs> um, and the, the Hoffa program is the Home Affordability Foreclosures Alternative. It's um, another program. There's so many programs out there, and it's very easy to get confused. Now, also, um, each lender has their own in-house programs. So you might not be able to find it under the home affordability, uh, the makinghomeaffordable.gov uh, website, but if you go to like bankofamerica.com, wellsfargo.com, all those individual banks, they have links um, for consumers, for their borrowers to go on that they can do a little of their own research uh, if, they, if they need help. And even if you're not eligible under HAMP, mm-hmm. um, they can still consider you for a private in-house modification. Right. right. I think most of the banks have their own proprietary mo- uh, modification yeah, guidelines. Do. And, and you and just, you need to pick up the phone and call them because you just never know what they're going to offer you. And they are going to want you to, you know, fill out their particular document set. Mm-hmm. So the, the documents you were referring to earlier, Janine, are, are kind of a standard Correct. set of documents, mm-hmm. but every bank has their, their own, own lender little specific. S- yeah, yeah. idiosyncratic thing yeah. that they mm-hmm. want done. Um, but you do have to have a budget. There's an RMA form, which is a request for modification assistance. I believe mm-hmm. that's been fairly standardized now across that, lenders. That was. There are a couple of programs out there, though, recently that I believe um, uh, with one of the Bank of America programs that they have, they did away with that, that you didn't need to do that. I mean, there are streamlined short sales, and there are all kinds of things where there's so many. Um, we do so many that it gets confusing. Um, but for... Um, Anybody who, again, talking about the big banks, they all have their own besides the government programs that are out there. So you really need to research. Um, I did want to talk about, um, you've come across, and we both have, uh, auction.com. Yes. And what's going on with auction.com. More lenders are going on board with that. I've closed one. 
I have mm -hmm. one presently pending um, with not, I've closed one with auction.com. Mm -hmm. I have one presently pending with another auction company. Okay. But they're very similar to an REO mm -hmm. is basically how it works. Um, you're going to get it rammed down your clients. They told throat, us there's no so choice. Speak. You don't have a choice. So, and, and I had a conversation with somebody there as to why they're doing this and what's happening. You can agree or disagree or comment or not comment. That's up to you. And this is just what I've learned. Um, the reason why they're going this route is due to what's called pocket listings. And a lot of um, people who get these foreclosures and listings like that, sometimes they hold on to them and they get a buyer themselves mm -hmm. before they put it on the market. And then it goes on the market and they're like, oh, you know, we we already have a buyer for that. Meanwhile, it's their own buyer. It does happen. If that's going to happen, it's not going to happen just in the short sale context or well, the listen, REO context. Exactly. It's going to happen in every context. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. absolutely. But this is just one area. Is that, that they against feel any guidelines? Or is it, it is. Yeah, it okay. is. It's against the guidelines. So what the banks were telling me was uh, they want everybody to have a fair share, a fair shot at getting that property. So now you could be in the middle of, and which I'm, at, uh, I'm in now, you could be in the middle of doing a short sale and Bank of America could say, okay, you know what, auction, it, you have to have auction.com take over. We're in the middle of a short sale, and we have a buyer, and we're under contract, and yes. Bank of America, is uh, doing we won't that. name names, but Bank of America is saying, you know what, we don't care you have a buyer, we don't care that it's under contract, we want this to go through auction.com, which means this particular buyer can now lose this house to someone who bids higher on the house. That's yes. unbelievable. That should be illegal. So that should be illegal because they already spent their money, right? They spent their money on an inspection. Because there's no guarantee They have a down payment because, down already. That's, yeah, that's they spent, yes, but that's, and, and I had this argument with them on the phone and they said, just because you, uh, you know, and I'm trying to explain this to them, you're not, you're not secure. You're not, you're not safe just because you're the buyer and you're in contract. So you could, you know, potentially lose that deal. So we're going to get into that a little bit more because this is something buyers need to know. All right, Absolutely. we'll take, take a quick, we'll uh, right qu a quick, quick break, <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> Sellers. And I am. I'm Bill Johnson, an old semi-retired dairy farmer hosting the Orange County Farm Talk Show every Wednesday, 12 noon to 1 p.m. I hope to promote all segments of farming along with input from our listeners every Wednesday, 12 to 1 on WTBQ. I'm Betty Hurd. And I'm Michael Bertolini. On our program, Warwick Then and Now, we discuss Warwick's historic past and the ongoing work of the Warwick Valley Historical Society. And our show airs every Monday morning at 11.30 on WTBQ. WTBQ. And we're back. That was a quick break. That was a quick break. <laughs> quick, quick put break. My headphones back yes. on. <laughs> Welcome back to the Home and Mortgage Show on WTBQ 93.5. Right, we're trying to share uh, information that buyers and sellers need to know if they are pursuing a short sale and what could potentially happen during the course of that short sale. And um, they have to understand that that has n nothing to do with us. You know, we know what we're supposed to be doing our, on our end, but if a bank throws a monkey wrench in and all of a sudden changes the name of the game, we have to go with the flow. We have to do that. Um, and people don't understand that. Not just the buyers. Yes, you spent money on a home inspection. You put money down on contract for a particular property. You think you're going to get it. Not always the case. It's a very difficult position to be in as a buyer of a short sale because mm -hmm. there's no guarantee that at the end of the day you're going to get the house that you've gone under contract for Correct. and i explain that to every single buyer that i meet with because it's out of our control it's subject to a third party's approval mm -hmm. and if that third party says no for whatever reason then we don't have a deal anymore right you're yeah. just sitting and, on the sidelines waiting we're, we're running into really two issues mm -hmm. one i think we touched on briefly last time was that these uh, short sales are being service released from one bank to another. I was going to mention that. And that is a huge problem because right in the when they're service released in the middle of, of the loan, service release means that they give it from Wells Fargo to a servicing company. We now have but, to start the process you know, from again, scratch. Again, this is where these people don't think. They should, be, they should look and say, you know what, we have these loans that are under contract that are in the middle of a short sale. Let's not transfer them. 
on the servicing of this. I don't think alone. they want them approved, Mike. You know? To be honest with you, I think that there's some something that we don't no. know about. It, or we're not there's privy there's to. Is it, is it, it maybe they're waiting for the market to come back a little bit? Maybe they're trying to get three thousand dollars extra. Or maybe they're waiting to get the income to offset with a loss. That much? I don't know. Yeah, I've heard I mean, that. But I don't know. know that that's the case. Right. They're waiting for the uh, particular consumer that has that loan to, to for the other spouse to get a, a employment again that they can start affording. So, yeah. So something. you've been Who behind knows? on your loan for three years and now all of a sudden, miraculously, you're going to be able to catch up? Well, they would have to modify in some way if, if somebody can start to afford it. That's, you know, the back interest. Yeah, I get that. But some people just But if don't. they've gotten to the point where they've res- resigned themselves to the fact that they have to sell the house and they're going to do a short sale, that's a pretty big point to get to. Yes. If you're a homeowner. Most people do not want to leave Okay, their and home. the other thing I have to mention in good faith is that these people didn't ask to be put in this position. Right. You know, they bought the house in good faith a number of years ago, generally, or they refinanced a number of years ago, when values were very artificially inflated because of various reasons. Mm-hmm. The market is now corrected. The short comes from the differential between what they bought it for mm-hmm. and what they presently owe. I mean, there may be other issues going on, like of the course. loss of a job or something else, but that's what creates the short in the short sale, mm-hmm. is, is the, market the value. People, I, I don't have an issue with the people that have, you know, had an issue... Um, it's, it's real for them. You know, it's, it's the people that say, you know what? I owe more than my house is worth. Why would I stay here? And they just stop making payments. Uh, you know, you know, the majority of the people though, they do have, now you have to, when uh, you're doing a short sale, you have to submit a, uh, a hardship letter. Correct. And you have to, uh, kind of just tell the bank your story, the story of how you got in the position you are today. And, and I've had them denied because afford. they didn't like the hardship letter. Yeah. There was mm-hmm. not a sufficient hardship. We've had short sales denied for so that reason. I always tell people, you know, think of it as the, you know, the M&Ms. So um, monetary, you lost your job, some, or a spouse lost one of their jobs, a significant change in your financial status. So monetary, marital, if you get divorced, that qualifies as a hardship or uh, medical if something happens to you medically and you just can't afford to stay in your home or you need to move to a different facility, whatever that reason is. Um that also qualifies. So I was look at the, the M&Ms. Uh, monetary could be not just that you lost your job, but maybe your company's relocating you to a different job somewhere else and you have to sell your house. So maybe you're in a, a decent financial position. You got a job that your company's relocating you to, but now your house isn't worth what you paid for it and you have to sell it as a short sale just to be able to move on to the the relocation uh job so you know that counts too i would say nine times out of ten mike it's not a strategic default (laughs) right right no absolutely absolutely i just i've seen it i've seen it i've seen it doesn't you know i get the call saying that i'm trying to sell my house and can we buy this other one under my husband yeah, under the radar brother yeah. yeah they want to do these you crazy do situations and, you, you definitely know. do get that i know so now um you what you just mentioned so if you did do a short sale tell people how long they have to wait yeah, so, before they could buy another house so there is a program under fha that is called the back to work program mm-hmm. and it allows people that 12 months out of a Uh, either a modification, uh, a bankruptcy, or a short sale, that they have the ability to purchase or refinance a home as long as they can show Mm -hmm. there's there's different guidelines. You know, uh, one of them just off the bat is uh, a at least a 20% decrease in income for at least six months prior to the default. That's a lot of money. Exactly. So it's showing, you know, you're showing that pattern. You're showing the track record. They have to be on time with whatever they've done over the last 12 months. But but they've had this this hardship. Mm-hmm. They've gotten past it, they and now they want it. Right, right now they've bounced back. They have the extra income. They have whatever that situation may be that's in their favor. That's and great. now they can go and they can purchase or, or refund it. And if again. they don't have that, then what's the minimum? If it takes uh, depending on depending on if it's FHA or if it's uh, conventional. But two years uh, on on a bankruptcy, three years on a foreclosure. I was going to say, uh, what about a foreclosure? Yeah, three, three years. years on a foreclosure. Okay. Um, modifications is a, is a big one. If you don't have that, that particular hardship that you can show, mm-hmm. my, banks do not want to finance somebody that had a modification. So really? You have, yeah, it's, uh, it's very difficult. You have, to, you have to show a lot, but um, hmm. that's been a big one. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, there are options out there. You just have to be able to look well, for them. To go back to your auction.com, though, thing. Yes. Um, that is becoming a big issue Mm -hmm. and it's becoming a big issue for the sellers as well as the buyers because we can be midstream if it's service released it simply goes to a different 
you know, bank and we have to start all over again from scratch. Mm -hmm. Auction.com puts in the possibility that someone with a superior claim or a superior, in theory, right to buy that house comes in and supersedes our present buyer. Yes. Which is they not They make us do open acceptable. houses. They, uh, unless it's a like a vacant house that's winterized, they make us do open houses. We have to hold certain uh, open houses. And what they do is, and the one thing I do, there's one thing I do like about it. When auction.com takes over, they do their own appraisal. They do their own price analysis. So it could help. You know, some of the banks we were talking about last week, they're asking these ridiculous prices. And we're like, where are you getting this from? If auction.com does step in. Uh, and come up with a realistic price. And, you know, then they kind of, you know, are an advocate a little bit on our side. And they go back to the bank and they're like, hey, you know, where are you coming up with this? We want this. We're going to put this up for auction at this price instead, which does help. Um, there are um, more and more banks joining this. I know Nation, it was Bank of America. Now Nation Star is involved with that. And I think City is going on board. I got a, the whole list in my office. So uh, if anybody wants more information on that, uh, please feel free to call me at 651-1776. Uh, uh, I do have all that information. Um, if you want to know more about just the basic uh, the, the options that are out there, again, they are a little lender specific, but we do have um, the Hoffa program. We have all of the, the guidelines and all of the, you know the criteria that you would have to meet to see if you qualify for a Hoffa short sale. Uh, it has to be your primary residence. You have to have purchased it before a certain time. You can't owe more than seven hundred and twenty-nine thousand. You couldn't uh, uh, write seven hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars on that, but that's a lot. You know, that's a that's in pretty Orange high County, threshold. Yeah, in County, that's a, that's lot. a pretty high threshold. Um, Which they the, may have adjusted. They may have adjusted down to because uh, right now it's six twenty five five hundred for loan limits. Six, <clears throat> so right. they might have, yeah. they might have adjusted yeah, yeah. that. Uh, well, this was updated uh, December of last uh, last month. Uh, so so this was just program. updated last month. Yeah, uh, you can't have walked away. Uh, and have the property condemned. So if it like something happened with one of the storms or whatever, and you walked away, it can't be a condemned property. It has to be your primary residence. This cannot be for uh, vacation home, second home, uh, investment property, um, or anything like that. Uh, it cannot be owned by anybody but uh, an individual. It can't be owned by a corporation or um, a business of any type like that. So there are different guidelines. Um, you're, you can have... Um, a FICO credit score that's lower than 620. So I wanted to which point that good. out because yeah, I know we, we mentioned that earlier. You know, um, uh, just uh, just mentioning FHA. Huge. FHA allows lower credit scores, mm -hmm. but you have to be, it has to be a gem, you know, and you're going to go through, uh, it's going to be one out of 10 that actually gets done when they're lower credit scores, you know. It has to be a real isolated situation. Really? No. Um also, with the Hoffa program, they could uh, you could potentially qualify for relocation money, money to help you uh, pack and move. The, the interesting thing with that is I've seen them give it, and I've seen them take it away. <laughs> and I've so, seen it anywhere from $1,000 to $30,000. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's incredible that what is. some of these banks are doing. Yes. It, really incredible. Um, but then again, we have other things that show up, and then they're like, well, you know, we could just take that money and use that to clear up this situation so that we can close, and then the the, uh, the seller never gets any of that money. We never, right. You if know, there's judgments or other too. liens, they may make them apply that right. money right. kind of as a shell game to we their have that going personal on now. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's so much you need to know about this. Uh, we can't cover it all in one show. We can't cover it all in 10, ten. shows, but... <laughs> <laughs> True. We try and give you a little bit of information with each show. You know, again, stuff you need to know. It's not easy, but uh, together we'll we'll help you through it. Absolutely. Right? There's a lot of resources out there for people, and and they shouldn't mm -hmm. feel like they're alone or they're isolated or you know this is just their problem. No, it's of course, not. It's, yeah. it's, everybody's going through it's it. It's statewide. It's nationwide. Yeah. You know, and absolutely. we're still we're still neck deep in it, and mm -hmm. I don't see us getting out of it anytime in the near future yeah well absolutely so what we'll do is we'll put some of this information i have to update our website actually we're going to put some um, more resources on there uh we were a little busy the past week or two in, in doing that but um you've been listening to the home and mortgage show uh, this is janine panarelli licensed real estate broker and owner of panarelli realty in goshen 651-1776 and michael giannetto residential home funding uh licensed mortgage loan originator and uh thank you michael mccann from o'keefe and mccann for joining us yes he's 
going to have to come back because, again, we've only just touched upon all this Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, just another quick uh, mention of that April 5th home ownership show. We're going to be making have. an announcement. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's not just for home buyers. It's for existing Main, home Maintaining owners your home. And, so and more things. on that will come. Absolutely. Yeah. So all right. Thank you for joining us. You guys us. have a great week, and hopefully we won't get snowed in later on in the week. And yeah. I could go and happy away. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.